They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mills, Your Village Shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hopefully, these girls right here will provide me with eggs for our kitchen. Now, if you think back about two weeks ago, we had the girls on on the Easter show. Then after that, we had our buddy Josh out here who showed us his fine building skills, put this thing together. Now, we have brought him outside. And you know what, I, in the back there, I was able to open the top and get the water and the feeder. In. I even put the heat lamp in there. Now, very recently, they began stretching their legs and wings and they've been running up and down the ramp. So they are now enjoying uh, bits of grass and bugs and wandering around having a big time. Now, because this is mobile, my whole goal is to get this out in the field. Now, predators have been our problem here. Even down in the big coop, raccoons have destroyed our chickens. So my hope is to get this out in the field with Moses, since we've got him separated from the babies. Since the last time I talked with you, we have a new baby on the farm. Here's Mona. She made her way into the world. Here's some very early uh, stuff we get just on the phone, pictures of her. It was kind of a hairy story. I'm on my way out of town. I'm too far away to come back. Nikki says, oh my goodness. I hear her on the phone. She says, we have a new baby. She says, I hear a baby. So she runs down there. She had to go in and get Kelly down here. They rounded up the critters, took Mavis and Mona down to the chicken coop, the old chicken coop, which is now our jug, as Janine calls it, our place to let those sheep bond for several hours, several days, and then we put them back in with the flock. All right, so we got babies on the farm. The ground is still too wet to turn over, but it's time to visit little Mona. I know you're going to love her. Now, this is not cute. It's adorable. <laughs> you know what? I can't. When, when we had this baby, it came down here. It's just the sound of it. Everything about this. Look how cute Mona is. Just now, Mona is going to die of old age here on the farm. She's a week old. <laughs> she's a week old. She's winding down. And she is strong, and they are doing really uh, Mavis is a great mother. Tell us what happened when you came home the other day. I heard a crying baby, a wet baby, and Moses had taken over. He thought he was mother. That was his baby. Yes. And I come diving in in my heels and all my dress clothes, pick it up. Everyone's jumping on me, trying to get me. <laughs> so, and I was calling. You were gone, so you couldn't help me. I had to wait for Kelly to get mama with the baby and we got her out there and within one hour they were bonding. They were taking pictures. I was out of town of course. Now to a sheep farmer who's got 86,000 sheep this is no big deal but to us it's huge. It's precious. This is our first baby. You're probably not supposed to hold them but who cares? Yeah. I love it. She is the sweetest so little baby. Cute. Look at that face. Look at the Isn't little brown sweet? on her legs. Now uh, milkweed should have had a baby by now but she shows no sign of being here anytime close. 
I'm not so sure about Myrtle over there. Myrtle's mean. Myrtle treats everybody bad. She was butting this baby. I know. So our plan for the ladies is to let them live out their lives here and have babies. And we want to build up our, our stock of sheep here and, and eat the boys. These, these sheep are absolutely no trouble. Now, we're going to make dinner later, but we do have some folks coming over uh, who make salsa locally. That and you can good. buy it locally. And we like the local stuff. But we just wanted to show Mona off, and we're going to have uh, another baby very shortly. Do you want to get back down and go find Mona? She wants her mama. Let's see what happens when you let her down. It's so funny to watch her play. What do you think? Here we go. Yeah, there's <laughs> mommy. There's mommy. Uh-huh, time for a snack. All right, let's go find us some salsa. I'm starving. I'm too. Jenny Hash, fire pit salsa yes. from Kentucky. Yes. I see Kentucky Pearl. It is Kentucky Pearl. Right I'd be proud front. of that too. I can smell it already. It smells good. Now, good. occasionally we're going to have people on this show who, who make things locally. You all mm -hmm. from? We're from Paris, from Bourbon County. Very good. Yes, so we're, we're fairly close. All right, here's the deal. Normally I would wait and we would talk and we'd do things, but you saw what I was doing. We're running around with sheep and I'm showing the chicken. So can I just go ahead? Go right ahead. This is the mild. And salsa for dinner. You know what I see, and we talked about a few things before we started here. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at that cilantro, and it's fresh. Everything in there looks fresh. It is. It's very fresh. It's always fresh. Now, you would think, how does that happen? And so I ask you, how long does this stay on the shelf? And it's... 13 days in the refrigerator. So when you get it, it's hot off the press. It was just made. It was just made. All right, I would love... To know the recipe. I'm not going to ask you that. I'm not going to ask your dad that. Oh, if we tell you. But I'm smelling some certain things, and boy, that's to my liking. You like it? You know what that is? That's super fresh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try the hot. Am I going to be okay? Yeah, you'll be have fine. have to call Amy. No, no. Mmm. The hot's good. It's the same, same recipe, just more peppers. A little more flavor. Tell us how this whole thing started while well, I'm well, not crunch behind you so they can hear you talk. <laughs> oh, I don't know, about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. Dad ended up with a recipe through a family member. What's Pop's name? He got Pat. Pat. Pat, yes. Ended up with the recipe through a family member, loved it, but we thought, you know, I need, need a little, little tweaking, a little tweaking. So we did, and we found a recipe we liked, and we started taking it to family functions, school events, mm -hmm. barbecues, People anything. Over. Everybody loved it, everybody mm -hmm. wanted it. But it wasn't something you, know, you can just go to the store and buy it. So finally, about two years ago, we decided if everybody loves it so much, why don't we do something with it? So we decided to market it. And it's been wonderful. You know what? That is just now that nice, warm finish. On the back, and kind it's of not, your... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not over the top, but that's nice. It's a pleasant aftertaste. You didn't overdo it on the onions. There's no onions. There's a reason you didn't overdo it on onions. Exactly. Here. You told me a secret. Well, that's okay. That's all right. I can tell you that one. You know what? A lot of times people do overdo it on onions and end up, you know, with a lot of this. And we do too. That's one reason we don't have any onions because they're they hurt. That's interesting. So we know that it's Kentucky Proud. We know it's locally made. You guys make it, and we know we can find it in our favorite local stores. Yes. Yes. And, okay, let's talk about salsa. Now, there's a thousand things that I put salsa in. We like it on everything. Everything. My mom eats it for breakfast with her eggs and sausage on a tortilla omelet. roll up. On, on an omelet, omelet mm -hmm. that's fine. Uh, Dad likes it on hamburgers and pork chops. Hmm. It's good you know, on my everything. grandfather used to put stuff like that on ice cream. I don't know about that. That sounds like something my grandfather would let's do. Let's take it over the top. Yes, bit. yes. All right, let's uh, let's let's make something a little pretty here, so right. I want to see what you're doing here. This is an egg and ground turkey sausage tortilla roll up. How about that? We could do just a little. Ooh, I like where you're going here. You know, when I'm really starving and, and on the road, mm -hmm. sometimes you stop at your little favorite fast food joint mm. that starts with an M and so on and so forth, and they have a Ooh. breakfast burrito. But I'm not crazy about this. Because it's not as good in, as ours. Then you're coming in with ground turkey. Yes. Ground turkey sausage. Do you want hot or mild, do you think? I want hot. Hot for breakfast? Yeah, for breakfast. Right. Yeah, that's just the way to start the day. I'm not going to break it down. I hear your baby. Yeah. You have a new baby. I do have a new baby. She will be six months old on the 18th. Congratulations. Natalie. She is quite the blessing. 
So just ground turkey, this is healthy. Yeah, it is. That's what uh, kind of been on a little bit of a clean eating health kick this year. So I try to kinda... stay away from healthy foods for the most part. Okay, well, I can make it nasty <laughs> for you. Do you want cheese on it? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. give me a little cheese. Just Boy, you could pop that in the oven for just a minute, too. You could pre-make them, yeah. add some salsa, have yeah. an easy breakfast to go in the morning. Oh, man. Like, instead of stopping at your favorite fast food restaurant, <laughs> these could be ready for you. Add some salsa and go. Mmm. I'm telling you what, the cilantro, when you look at it, it's fresh. It is. So, baked potato. Baked potato. We, Give use, some more ideas. we just do a little cheese and a little salsa. I mean, nothing fancy on the baked potato. I like sour cream. I like a loaded baked potato. Mm -hmm. But with the salsa, it's simple. It's easy. It's good. You don't you don't need a lot of other toppings. Man, I'm telling you, there's so many just, applications here. That the only thing that's missing here is more salsa. All right, I bet that's it. about the way I'd eat it right there. <laughs> Fresh. You can look at the freshness there. I mean, just look at that. Look, the cilantro looks like you just pulled it out of the garden. Look for it. That's your favorite local store. <laughs> very good, Jenny. Thank you very Delicious. much. Delicious. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Should I let Nikki have some? She can have some if she wants. I don't know. I'm not going to get in the middle of that. We saw the rain clouds gathering, so we thought we'd better go check on Milkweed. Now, Milkweed was progressing rapidly in her uh, expecting stage, so we wanted to check and see if she had a baby. She was showing absolutely no signs. They're supposed to lay down. They're supposed to do all this stuff. Guess what? She must have just popped this baby out. Next thing you know, we have Maury. Maury is a boy's name. Therefore, Maury is a boy. Now, not to be mean or anything, but the girls will probably die of old age. Maury, well, I'll leave it at that. Now, he's a wonderful, healthy little guy, growing rapidly. I mean, this guy's huge. We're going to put him and Milkweed back in with the other one shortly, let the dogs back in when we, Moses figures out that they're not his babies. And then the rain came down, so we went back to the harvest cabin, and here's our plan for the rainy day. So I called in my able assistant, Mrs. Farmer. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. You come here often? I do, when you're here, when you're cooking. That's true. You know what? Here's the deal. Here's what happens. Every now and then you go to your favorite store and you see a sale. Right. Okay, you gotta think ahead. We always think ahead about our food. What if chicken is really cheap? What if pork's really cheap? What if beef's really cheap? You can can that. You can freeze it as well. But what if you're out of freezer space? Right. What if you just killed a hog? This is easier to store. What if you killed four deer? And there's another reason you might want to think about canning meat. That is, when you can this meat, it is ready to eat. Now, when you look at it in a jar, sometimes you think, well, that's not very attractive. Right. Because the fat kind of works its way to the top sometimes. But that means nothing with taste. But when wintertime does come, fall comes, you want cheap and easy mm -hmm. stews, soups, things that fill right. your belly, things that are hot. Now, when it comes to the chicken or the pork or the, even the fish, you talk about making like tuna casserole, mm -hmm. or you talk, or you know, yeah, out of your your meat, out of your fish. You can meat. eat it right out of the jar. It's so good. You can, and you know, you can make a chicken salad, uh, stroganoff, you make anything. Me hungry. That's what I'm saying. This stuff is already done. Usually, and I've talked about this a million times. Say we're out here cowboy cooking, and your meat takes you three or four hours right. to to get soft. What if? Now we just did the cowboy cooking pot roast. Right. What if we took like a, and wanted to make a stew? Yeah. And that was already done. Then you only have your vegetables. Right. Now, if you've canned your vegetables too, they're already going to be ready. Just heat it up and go. In a short amount of time, you can have soups and stews and wonderful things. And don't forget, it makes wonderful chicken salad. Now, you've caught a bunch of fish, a whole bunch of fish. It happens on occasion. Mm -hmm. You bring them home, and it's better for the firm, fleshed fish. Or you kill an Asian carp. Mm -hmm. People laugh at me when I say the Asian carp. Please, it's delicious. It is wonderful. It's delicious. And when you pressure cook that. Those bones dissolve as well, and you can make you know tuna fish out of that with, with a little mayonnaise and relish, and you're good to go. I remember eating out of the jar with crackers. It's that it's good with wonderful. nothing. Wonderful. Right. Now, here's one thing you have to keep in mind about canning meat: no hot packing, pressure cooking, pressure cooking only. You got to kill all the germs. When you're putting this stuff up, 
you have to sterilize your jars and lids. We sterilize those too. And you have to have a clean, disinfected working area. And we've done the best we can to do that. Now, you are responsible for your kitchen and your cleanliness. This is what we do. There, are, there is some danger, but there's danger in walking outside and, and driving down the road. If you have some bad tomatoes, you'll know they're oh, yeah, bad. You will. Your nose will tell you. But we have been doing this a long time and have not had any instances of that. We've got venison. Now people say, well, how long can you store it? Well, I've eaten stuff that's two and three years old. Mm -hmm. But what we really do with this is usually we'll only take that meat and use it that year or maybe the next. And we check that very carefully, smell it, so on and so forth. But usually we take care of that rather quickly because right. it's so good and it's so easy. It's already cooked, it's already soft, and there's so much you can do with it. What we're doing is raw packing. That's what they call it. We're gonna take, let's start with the beef. We're gonna take our jar and we're gonna just basically cut this up into whatever size chunks you would wanna use. And I can kinda cut again. This is a boneless shoulder roast, and you really wanna buy these, get them cut up as soon as you can. What you're gonna do, you're gonna pack this in here, leave about an inch head space here because the juices will come off out of this. You don't have to put any juice in there. You can if you want, if you wanna put a little bit of boiling water. Some people put bouillon. We're just gonna put a little salt and a little pepper you don't need the actual salt to preserve this. We cut off most of the fat. It doesn't hurt to leave a little on there. And we're just gonna do one little jar of each to show you how it's done. When it comes to storage, you need an even, cool temperature. And we like it fairly dark. We put ours in our laundry room. We're, we're still talking about it, but if it'll ever stop raining, we're gonna start on our root cellar. That'd be nice. That'll be nice. Now that's what that's gonna look like. We'll take a little bit of pepper. How do you like our 1936 salt shakers that we found? I like my old stuff. We have disinfected our board. We're going to start again with the chicken. And we found a boneless breasts on sale. But we're going to cut that up the same way. And again, you talk about chicken noodle soup real quick, like oh, yeah. chicken salad. I mean, the amount of work that we're putting into this is not that great. Now again, this is what we do. We're responsible for our kitchen. Just be careful. Do things as clean as you can, and you'll be good to go. Okay, we have come back with a clean board, and we're gonna cut some fish up. We're gonna cut that a little bit differently, just put it in long strips. And I tell you, a fish that this really works good for is striper or white bass. And we'll just pile that in there. You wanna get as much air out of there as you can. You can put a little bit of a mayonnaise in this with some of the garden relish. It's good. And you've got yourself an instant, wonderful sandwich. And these are boneless, obviously, but that's the thing about this too. If you run into a little bit of bones, guess what? It's gonna cook them up when you pressure cook like this. It's gonna cook those up. Just a little salt and pepper is what we do in each so one. So simple. So simple. Now, let's talk about your pressure cooker real quick. Make sure that your little hole in the top where your steam comes through is clear. You can take that up and look at it, blow through it, make sure it's clear. This itself, the little jiggler, is five pounds. This is 10 pounds pressure when you put that on. There's one more that would make it 15 we've got at the house, but we don't need that. At this elevation, and check your canning book, check where you are. For this, we need 10 pounds pressure. Perfect. So we've got three different kinds of meats. We're coming up with our pork. Let's get we this board up. disinfected. And I'm heating some water up to put in our canner. We're gonna have to start with three quarts. Now this is the Presto. Look up your particular canner and see what it needs. We've got the rack in the bottom and we're getting ready to get it rolling. We have disinfected our board and we have some pork loin that was really cheap. And we're gonna cut that up into chunks as well. The, the things you can do with this is limitless. Now think about this. Your pork's gonna come out nice and tender. It's gonna have a little bit of flavor from the salt and pepper, but you can throw some barbecue sauce in there. Oh, yeah. Instant sandwiches for yeah. kids, for us. So again, we're just about out of freezer space and we're thinking about quick and easy. Remember the inch headroom? Make sure everything's sterilized. Look good. Okay, let's go a little salt. A little pepper. I like your salt and pepper shaker. You wanna make sure the tops of your jars right around here don't have anything on them that would make it less than a good seal. We have now four meals in a jar for the future. Look how fast we did it. And that. boom. 
So just be careful, stay clean. And look, we got our little tool. If you'll open the top of this. Now, you get the top on, you get your water hot. When you see steam starting to come out the top, let it do that for about 10 minutes before you put the jiggler on. When you put the jiggler on, when it starts the jiggling process, that's when you start your timing. Pints for meat here in Kentucky, it's 75 minutes okay. per pint. If you want to do quarts, it's 90 minutes. Set your timer. When it's done, turn your heat off. Let that heat come down. Let it come down for a long time till your jiggler stops jigging and your little pressure cap goes down and boom, you know you're done. At that point, you can start thinking about taking the jiggler off. Pick them up, set them down, let them cool, put them in your storage space, and then whenever you want them, they're there. Now, one thing you do want to do once you get them out, so you can rotate them if you know you got some that you need to eat now, mark on the top the date and exactly what, what it is because it, it can be confusing. They look close a little bit, don't they? They do. This is a wonderful way to have a pre-made meal for the most part. Your meat is done it. and it's flavorful and it's delicious and you know where it came from. It's so simple. There's nothing to it. Now this would probably be an excellent time to start talking about our Facebook page. We have the best Facebook friends you that do. respond and we, we actually talk back and forth about the shows that we have and, and we have great friends out there. But if you're not our Facebook friend, please visit us, like our page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, and check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com You'll see all kinds of recipes, all the shows that maybe you haven't seen before, and we got a bunch of them. We do a bunch of shows here, and there's a reason we do a bunch of shows, because Kelly, our daughter, is running the camera. She's doing the editing, and this is her job. Mm -hmm. So when we're done with work, we come home and we're cooking, and she's there doing that with us. That's how we can do so many shows, and we're keeping them coming because you're asking for them. We thank you very much. We're going to get 2 million hits on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching all over the world. It might be time to go to the couch and sit down and thank some folks for some interesting yes, stuff we've gotten got in some the mail. Nice, time for a mail call? Nice stuff you've gotten recently. It's time for Country Kitchen Mail Call, brought to you by Nikki's Tiny Piano and Our Three Hands. It is mail call time. You know what? We get a lot of nice stuff from folks. This... Uh, is from Ronnie Lee. It's here's what I really like: old cookbooks. This says snack time symphony, TV tidbits, party treats, patio picnics, buffet lunches, and dessert delights. So we're gonna actually take a look at this book and try to find some stuff that we have never seen before. And listen, to some of the stuff: TV snacks, Andy Rooney sausage biscuits, Wizard of Oz snack, and we're gonna make maybe Mr. Chips avocado dip, and that is so cool. And we thank Ronnie Lee. And Ronnie says, hey, I'm sending you this. Why don't you send me a cookbook? And we're going to sign it for his kids. He's going to hand that down. He handed this down from his mother. And it looks like she was a member of the Freedom Christian Church in Freedom, Kentucky. That's just cool. Thank you very much. Now, as we're out and about, we're always shopping for things to put in our kitchen. Our kitchen is, is roughly based on the 1930s to early 1940s. It really takes us back to a time, of course, we weren't born then, but I saw my grandparents' kitchen. And my parents were raised up in that age. It just has a comfort feeling for me to think about going back to those times. So we stop at antique stores. One of them is Back Porch Treasures in Harrodsburg, where we stopped by and we found all these copper utensils that are so cool. And Linda McGlone had that booth, and we got those, and she gave us this chair to use out. She said we need to use that by the uh, cowboy cooking, so we thank Linda for that. You know, every now and then, I'm getting ready to cook, and I have terror that strikes me, and I remember. <gasps> the Pepper Bandit, Glenn Thompson, one of our good friends. And you know what? Glenn, it was so kind to make us a little pie safe, which we call the Pepper Safe, which is absolutely crammed full of black pepper. In case he ever comes over, Glenn needs a lot of pepper. We thank him so much for his craftsmanship, and he made us this beautiful little pie safe where we will enjoy this in the cabin and always have that. And again, thank you so much for viewing, sending us your kind letters. We'll read them when we get a chance, and if we use a recipe on the show, we will send you something from our store. Thank you so much. We got our beautiful meat in a jar, four different kinds. We have our beautiful salt shakers mm -hmm. from 1936. And I'm starving. Can we eat? Like open a Technically, jar? we yeah, could. Wow. It's still still warm. Okay. We slap it on a sandwich or just pour it right out of the jar. Okay. <laughs> this is the time 
that we come to at the end of the week where we say it's all about good times, good friends, and good canned meats. meat. Woohoo! We'll see you next week on Tim Barber's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Edward Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey Neil, how are you? How was the trip? With nearly seven million investors. He's right here, hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.